Greetings, we're back again. This is Sir Ken with, I think, episode two of Ask Us Anything. And again, we really appreciate the comments and the questions that you're asking, because without you, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, yeah, before we get into the questions, I just want to, again, just kind of like clarify Wu Sabat for people, because this is this is all based on Wusabat and for people who saw our our first video you know we were explaining about what Wusabat is and i just want to again come constantly tweak it because people keep asking the questions Wusabat would be if you took all the positive all the truths of all the facts from christianity from judaism from any walk of life and you put it together in one kind of box or one container, that would be Wu Sabat because Wu Sabat just deals with actual facts and allows people to do their research and come to their own conclusions. And so when we say Wu Sabat is the solution or the answer for everything, we're saying to people to make that decision on their own. We're not bashing or forcing anybody to, you know what I mean, join Wu Sabat. So with that said, um, let's let's look at the questions. Let's let's look at what you guys have been asking since the last video from last week. Okay, let me get my reading glasses. All right, number one. Um, I am from South Africa. I belong to the Bar Pedi, Baswana, Basotho, and Vavenda. Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing these words correctly. Nations. Here, the missionaries did not take away our language. Instead, they translated their holy scripts to our language and made our supreme being into a Christian. I pray in my language to connect to Mondimo and I communicate to my Badimo, those who have, those who have accepted the dwelling of the dwelling of the spirit, lo hodimo, and are in the presence of modimo, the great spirit, in my language. But since modimo has been translated to God, am I still praying to modimo or God? <laughs> I was waiting for the question, because remember guys, this is about asking questions, not making statements. But um, that's the point, that if you have something that's authentic or original, and it's translated to God. The point is that you should still stick to the original because by the translation, it's making it lesser or weaker than what it really is. So the intentions are correct and you're praying in your own tongue and your own language. That's the point we're making. We're not telling people to not pray in their own culture and their own language because there are many cultures and different languages which are more authentic than the English because when we explain that the word God comes from German, really is an acronym or um, it's gut, it's from the word gut, which is really a description, you know. Um, you hear the word goma, oz and the bar, which is wisdom, strength and beauty. These are attributes of a man or physical being. So, yes, it's better to stick to your own language. And we... Obviously, with Wu Sabat, we have our own language, Misbatia or Sabaic or Nuapik, which is what we use in our culture to call on our deities. So, yes, it's more authentic to stick to your original. Um, what is your opinion on Bobby Hemet teachings? Remember, Wu Sabat is based on actual facts, it's based on truth and teachings. So, we don't have opinions. This is where the problem is. People have opinions, and if you have 20 people and everybody says, well, actually, my opinion is this, and my opinion is this, everybody has an opinion, then you're going to argue, and there's, there's going to be confusion, because everybody's going to stick to their opinion. We don't deal with opinions, so the facts are the facts, regardless of who they're coming from. Bobby teaches facts on Egypt. He teaches a lot of good information, like many other people. But what we are saying to you is that, we would take the facts from anybody. And so, you know, Bobby's got good information. The difference between us and others is that we have a culture known as Wu Sabat, which covers everything. So 
we would listen to anybody and in good information, but we apply it within our culture because truth is truth. So if Bobby's got factual information, no problem. It doesn't matter who it is. You know? So we, we, we do like and listen to Bobby's information. However, you have to deal with a circumference of information. So our information is what I say, like it gives you the full, the full circumference, all right? Um, keep the knowledge coming, new era, new age, love, compassion and harmony, the only way. That's not a question, but thanks for that. I think that's Tammy Johnson, 8817. All right. Dr. Malachi York is, this one is from Nicola on the Contrary TV, 5683. Dr. Malachi York is not the only person that's pushing this information out, but he is a very prominent person in this journey. Some people have pieces of it, like Billy Carson, who is just trying to learn, just like us all, and telling us what he's learned. I don't think it's nothing wrong with that. We need to stop shooting each other down and start lifting each other up and helping each other. I have to address this here. Yeah? Number one, I don't think anyone has ever heard me say that Dr. York is the only person pushing the information. So when people make statements or ask questions, one, there is a, a way to ask a question. Be direct, ask your question and we can address it. Don't make statements or, you know, act like or assume that we had saying something or said something we didn't say. So we've never said Dr. York is the only person. We've never said that... Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with Billy Carson. What we, we get a question on Billy Carson or somebody asked a question on Billy Carson or somebody else mentioned 19 keys. When we asked a question, we have to answer the question. And the reality is that what I mentioned originally was that if you're in a particular field, right? Um, let's say I was a runner and that was my field. I will make it my duty to give props or to give respect to those who came before me. In fact, I will know who was the best runner, for example. So, you know, at a time when, say, Hussein Bolt was the fastest runner, 100 metres, if I'm running 100 metres and I'm coming, telling everyone I'm a 100 metres runner, but I don't mention the person that is kind of number one, there, there will be something there like, why don't you give respect or why don't you mention that person? So, what I said about Bill Carson is facts. It's like I said he came on the scene way after Dr. York. I said that, you know, he gives you some information, it's good information, but he doesn't go all the way. I said he's not a linguist. He does not speak 19 languages and translate all the scriptures like Dr. York has done. Um, so when I'm not, I'm not, we're not uh, shooting him down. We're not shooting anybody down, but we have to address these things. So somebody asked me a question about, what do you think about Bill Carson? I'm gonna tell them the truth. I also said there's some information that it's not aligned. If you study and you research, he will say one thing and then you kind of get a conflicting answer if you know the information. So if people are listening, they might be sent in a tangent, on a tangent or the wrong direction. So it's our duty to clear it up, you know? So I'm not shooting down Bill Carson. I broke down the name because, you know, when you look at the phonetics and the etymology of words, there are meanings behind it, you know. So, yeah, um, what's the last thing? We need to stop shooting. I've already addressed that. Yeah, we lift anyone up who's doing positive works, but we will always address and give the facts. Um, and the other person I mentioned, and it was also mentioned, is um, 19 Keys. The point I made about being young, coming on the scene, way after elders and other people have already put their information out. And the particular point I made with 19 Keys was that Dr. York is known as, or Yanun is known as the 19th elder. And if anyone's come through the nation of Islam, which is what 19 Keys has, you will know about the Honorable, um, Louis, Far Honorable Louis Farrakhan, you will know about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you will know about the origin of their teachings. and their teacher's teacher mentioned the master teacher 
as in, you know, Honorable Elijah Muhammad mentioned Dr. York, and, you know, and even Farrakhan's mentioned Dr. York. So if you're 19 Keys and you never men mentioned Dr. York, and, you know, I mean, you're using that name as 19 Keys, and again, there's a correlation. That's why I mentioned it, to say, why don't you ever mention people that came before you? Not knocking him down. He's doing what he's doing. We're doing what we're doing. We're in a, you know, different lanes. Um, what's next? Thank you so much for these conversations. I would like to know, do all the Adamites have RH negative blood? Right. What group of people are the ambassade asexuals? Um, that's like three questions. Lastly, was Lucy the oldest known female whose bones are discovered in 1974? All right, there's three questions there, so I'll address those. Um, yes, the Adamites, because the Adamites was actually a project and it was, they were um, grafted as hybrids using extraterrestrial DNA. So that's where the RH um, negative blood type comes in. So that's correct. Number two, um, what are the people of Ambassid? Um, I don't, sometimes people use terms that I may not be familiar with, but. Um, I can touch on the asexual. Asexual is a, a mode of reproduction where instead of having two parents, one parent can produce offspring. So you'll find like certain plants, certain, um, you know what I mean, certain, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, certain types of parents. Because when we say parents, we, we think of man and woman, but you know, in reproduction, in nature, um, you can have one parent produce um, offspring, like the single cells reproducing and dividing into another cell as the original like amoebas and algae that seeded the planet. And the last part was, lastly, was Lucy the oldest? No, this is so important. Um, on page 30 of our book, I think it's page 30, this is why this is such a useful book because we give you the references um, for certain information and just grouping it together in one. So, yeah, there you go. On page 30, we give you like from 2.5 million years old, right, which is the Australopithecus, um, which was 1924 discovered. Like we give you the date when it was discovered and the species. And you can see we go from 2.5 million all the way to 7.1 million, which is... Um, dealing with the Selahanthropus tetradenesis. You know, this is like Greek words, um, hard to pronounce, but we're basically giving you, you know, Lucy, you're talking about, what, 3.2 million years, um, where we go all the way to 7.1 million years, and you have all of them in one grouping. So that's something that's very useful, and there's a picture of Ardi and... Um, the bones here as well. So that's why we put the book together so you can get information in one go. So for example, another good one is like um, all the extraterrestrials or as many as them as possible. And um, we find something else which is very useful. So this is like a good little reference book um, for you to, to carry around that gives you that type of information. Like again, here you go. On page 85, we give you like in Genesis 19, 13, the Lord has a face. Another bit, Exodus 33, 11, the Lord has a face. Exodus 31, 18, the Lord has a finger. Psalms 10, 12, the Lord has hands. Psalms 18, 8, the Lord has a nose. Um, the Lord has feet, that's Psalms 18, 9. Psalms 33, 18, the Lord has eyes. So throughout this, we give you the body parts of God like as references. So that's useful. Um, let's keep going. I love the way the brothers bring science and culture to us, seeking our divine ancestral way to our soul, our true selves. Okay, great. That's not a question. We shall rise. But thank you for the, for the comments and um, the positive comments. Seriously, I want to explore more and learn your teachings. Great. If you want to learn more about our teachings, nashat.co.uk. The teachings that you hear me speak on, as a student teacher of the master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, you can get those teachings from all the books that he has put out, over a thousand books. And for those who really care, imagine, right, if he was out here now, we would be getting 
different level of information. I mean, the whole planet. And so for those who want to really support and care about him, we still have a legal fight that we're, you know, we're, we've been fighting for over 20 years. And if everyone and anyone wants to support and help, please make a donation, small donation, to Acts of Kindness Donation at Outlook.com. I'm sure it, this will be put on the screen as well. All right. So it doesn't matter. I mean, we get so many views and if half of those helped, he will be out. So let's, let's get him out. And then the whole world will be able to ask him questions on anything, you know, which, which is something that we're really looking forward to. All right. Um, thank you, brother, for answering my questions. Um, okay, that's great. Thank you. Thanks very much for these truthful revelations. Highly appreciated. Thank you guys too for asking the questions. Thank you, thank you. Thanks very much. I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly do appreciate the details you put forward. Most of these are not questions. They're just saying thank you, thank you, great. Okay, here's a question. What do you think about us having babies? This is from Mara Thonmi. Sorry if I can't pronounce the names properly, but they're quite long names. But question is, what do you think about us having babies if we all just pass away? Death stirs our emotions, yet we knew and know death happens and we continue to have babies. Not quite sure of the question, but um, I guess I can do the first part. Do you think, what do you think about us having babies? We have to have babies to prolong life and the, the, the whole cycle of life is based on us having babies. The thing is that um, we're, the master, Dr. Malachi Z. York, told us, he said, as long as babies are being born, there's hope. And so it's not about having babies, it's about preparing before you have the baby. What types of babies are you going to have? We have a part of rat called um, lambs rams as lambs which deals with this whole subject because as we've taught many times three months before the babies in the mother's womb things are happening on the spiritual side so it's about what the male and the female are doing how have they prepared their vessel to receive this new entity that's coming here and once they arrive what are you going to teach them how are you going to bring them up are they going to be a, a solution to the world or they're going to become a problem to the world are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution and so it is a very important thing to realize that having babies is not just oh we just met in a club had a few drinks and then we have a baby because there is a, a very spiritual side to the beings that are coming here and the cycle of life requires us to produce worthwhile members of society people that are coming here or beings that are coming here to, to help humanity to do great things, you know. So, yes, there's nothing wrong with having babies, but can you look after the babies? Are you healthy? Are you ready and prepared to, you know, deal with this baby once that baby comes into this world? Um, and death, death is a part of the cycle, because if, if, if people didn't die, then, do you know what I mean, there wouldn't be the cycle of the regeneration. Life is a cycle, you know, things come and they live and they go and the parts that go back to the earth, go back to the earth. All right, I hope I answered the question. Um, another great video, you guys, thank you. Re okay, that's us asking you to read the comments. Yeah, read the comments so that you can um, like. The most likes are the questions that get addressed first, that go to the top. So yeah, read, read the comments and um, the ones you like give a thumbs up. Um, I listen to both you, Billy Carson. You both have much to offer. Please do not tear each other down. Again, this has come up again. We're not tearing each other down. I'm not tearing Bill, Car what's his name? Bill Carson down. Um, we study everyone. It's our duty to know what people are saying, what they're thinking. Remember as well, we're also helping people because there are many people that can lead you astray. I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying that Factual, factual information is factual information. And it's down to the individual to do their research, check them out, and then make your own mind up. But I'm not here to tear Bill Carson down. All I'm pointing out is 
we predate him in terms of the information we've been putting out. And they don't mention the master teacher who's a predecessor. And he was talking about Anunnaki and breaking down information way before Bill Carson came on the scene. And I'm just saying, give respect where respect is due. There may be reasons why he doesn't mention our master teacher, but people need to know the source of information. Who was providing or giving that information first? And what you will find is if you dig deep enough, most of the teachers that you come across have come across Dr. Malachi Z. York's books. Some of them are reading them secretly and they're not giving props where props is due. And, you know, you should give reverence. We always do that. It's in our... You know what I mean? It's, it helps us to give reverence. Like, if I was here acting like all this information came from me, and I imagine I was giving you all this information and I never mentioned Dr. Malachi Z. York, who saved me and who opened my eyes and for me to start to go on my spiritual journey and still on it till today. If I never kind of recognised and gave him props, like, thank you, you know what I mean? How, how would you feel watching me saying all this stuff and maybe acting like it's coming from me. That's the point I'm making. So we're not tearing anybody down. Um, okay, another question. Uh, that was from GMC Griff 5592. Sikaba um, 007. I wonder why you use Gandhi to cite the race example when it is a discovered fact from his own writings that Gandhi was indeed racist against the Africans and black people. Please, when you quote us, yeah, be accurate. Um, when I was mentioning Gandhi, there was a specific point I was making, which was that in terms of sacrificing, I said certain people have sacrificed for the cause or for their people. And I used Gandhi as an example when I said he starved himself because, you know, he had a cause that he was fighting for. The relevance was that Dr. Malachi Z. York also has sacrificed and has been incarcerated for over 20 years for teaching the truth. And a lot of the allegations and things that people have put on him are, are not him and he's, in, he's innocent. So anyone who's fighting a cause and are willing to sacrifice, yes, Gandhi may have been racist, but that doesn't dispute the fact that he did sacrifice for his people. That was the point. I wasn't mentioning him in anything to do with racism or anything like that. So please get the, um, the things we say accurate and ask direct questions, please. There is an art to asking questions and those who ask questions in the right way, they will get the answer. Don't make statements and be very con convoluted in terms of the way you're asking your question. But yeah, so I hope that's clear. The divine love is magic stick comes from the heart, complete and unconditional love. Thanks again, blessings. Absolutely. When you deal with higher sciences and you deal with transcending people, places and things, you start to deal with things like divine love because divine love is not all truth. Yeah, truth is truth. It doesn't matter where it comes from or who it comes from. If it's the truth, it's the truth. And how do you establish that something is the truth? It reasons out. It makes sense. If something doesn't make sense, then you have to look into why doesn't it make sense. Like I say, if I was to say, we all breathe oxygen. Now you might use a scientific term for oxygen, or we might say air, but the fact is the fact. Everyone on the planet is breathing oxygen. So we can't argue about that, do you see? So we deal with facts to the point where it's broken down to its very basic so that everyone can basically say, hmm, that, that makes sense, it's the truth. So when we address gods or we address all these deities and beings that don't make sense, it's like, how can you be almighty, all powerful, but yet when we say do something like get rid of all the problems on the planet, you can't do it. And then people will make excuses and say, well, it's because he's testing you. We say, okay, how can he test you if he already knows the answer? That's a bit futile. It's like, why are you testing me? I put the tree in the garden to test you to see if you're going to eat it, but I already know everything. These are the things we do to make people think, not that we're saying that, um, do you know what I mean? There are different levels. So divine love is key. Divine love is universal as is truth. Yeah, truth will always prevail over falsehood. So yeah, that's a good point. You're saying that divine love and unconditional love 
is the way forward for all people, all humanity. Um, can you give a bit of guidance on meditation, such as how you prepare and do you always have to set an intention? My second question is, what is your view on the African Orishas such as Oshun, Yemaya, etc.? Again, <laughs> get the book, because there's a whole chapter here on um, meditation. Um, I will answer the question briefly, but look, meditation and fasting, um, it, we, we go into that. So again, get this book because it covers a lot of information dealing with meditation. But yes, intention in everything is key. This is why sometimes two people may do exactly the same thing and one person will get the results and the other person may not get the results because the intentions behind it is the energy behind it, you know. So have you ever seen a situation where two people are eating food and the other person, normally the partners, like a man might be eating his food. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a man in here and I know female do this. They've got theirs and they'll come bring their, their spoon or their fork into your plate, take it and say, mm, this tastes nicer. Yeah, because the energy is different between the two plates. So intentions is key, whether you're going to fast, whether you're going to pray, whether you're going to smudge the room with incense like the sage, your intentions play a major part. Um, second question, what is your view on the... Yeah, the Yoruba religion, the original way of life, is actually animist, which ties into what we practice as Sabians. So we are the original Yoruba as well. Um, what ended up happening is that other like races influenced um, the Yoruba religion. So, for example, when you're saying Obatala, we say Obatala or Oba Ta'ala. The first part, Oba, O-B-A, is Baba or Father. And then the Ta'ala, you can hear Allah in it. And this is when, you know, the Arabs kind of had an influence on the original Yoruba religion. And then now they have added practices and even like the Phoenicians and certain races that influenced the Yoruba. And this is why you now see blood sacrifices. Sometimes people are killing chickens and in their rituals, they're now incorporating, you know, things like, as I said, to do with killing animals and blood. And you see Allah and certain things mentioned within the Yoruba. But yeah, like, I'll, I'll emphasize it again. The original Yoruba in its pure pristine stage is our animist way of life just like the original christianity if you want to use that term as in if you took the truths from christianity the things that are universal like love you love your, yourself as you love thy neighbor treat other people the way you would like to be treated um, and you will find that in islam christianity judaism and most religions it's like it's universal so the if you took all the, the pristine truths and facts from everyone and put it into one box, that would be Wu Sabat. Yeah, so that, I hope that answers that question. And even if you look at the names, they, they align with the ancient Egyptian deities. The names you mentioned like Oshun, Yemeya, um, Obatala, etc. The, the original names. I got a question. Was that you in the Jay-Z and Jazzo video originators 99. It looks just like a young version of you. Thanks for the compliment. Uh, Jazzo definitely looked like a student about students. How about Jay-Z? Where are the students? Right, that's an excellent question. Most of the hip hop world, right, know of Dr. York. He actually influenced a lot of them. And you're right, Jazzo was a part of the community. Even though I saw a recent video where He's saying he was, but he's not aligning himself with Dr. York and Jay-Z as well. He distanced himself. If you look at that originator video, you see both Jay-Z and him on the video. And they were wearing the Nubian Nation um, attire. They had the flag. And pretty much every hip-hop artist, as I mentioned before, um, Prodigy, um, Nas, many people, Queen Latifah, a lot of them, came by way of Dr. York during the era when Dr. York had a studio, um, he's a musician himself. Dr. York actually was on top of the pops here in the UK. So Google that, you see him performing one of his songs on top of the pops because Dr. York had um, a musical background, he had a group, and so a lot of artists, what happened is he would write, ghostwrite for some people as well. 
And so people be singing his lyrics, not even realizing that he is the writer behind the scene. And he influenced a lot of these rappers, um, Jay-Z including. But of course, a lot of people, and it was done intentionally, when he got incarcerated or all these allegations of a sexual nature, which are not true, um, came about. Some people don't want to be associated with them. Not only that, some people sign record deals, record contracts where they're conned into, you know what I mean, submitting, um, and their contract means that they can't promote or be associated with certain things because it's going to affect their money, you know. So there are many, many artists, including people like Erica Badu, Stevie Wonder, um, you know, many, many, many people that have come across Dr. Yo, but I'm not the person in the video. Thanks for the compliment. Um, but yeah, you're right. They were definitely influenced by Dr. Yo. Can you please tell me when did Dr. Malachi spirit, he get here and will he be getting out soon? Okay, I, I kind of get the question. Dr. Malachi himself was born in 1945, June the 26th, 1945. The being that you're referring to as um, spirit, that's the being known as Yanun. Yanun uh, transcends what we call time and age because he can reincarnate over and over and over again. In different um, time zones, different cultures, known by many titles. One of the most prominent one being Tahuti. Okay, um, so yes, he's been around <laughs> for. A long time because when you get outside our um, time zone, time is not measured in the way we measure time. So this being you're known from the planet risk, um, yeah, he, he's without beginning, without end. Because time is what gives you a beginning and an end. Like, how can you say the, um, what do they say, the alpha and the omega? It's like, if you don't have a one, you can't have the end, or if you don't have an A, how do you have a Z? It's like the two are just a cycle because when you get to the end, you start again, like we always say in terms of the cycle of life. So, um, yeah, so really, uh, I'm trying to put the question, he has no beginning or no end. And in the scriptures, people tend to make everything about Jesus because they say it's Jesus that has Alpha and Omega. I mean, like, how can you know like when people say infinity, if infinity means you've never got to the end, how can you say it's infinity? What is infinity? You see, so to have a beginning and an end means that's not infinity. So to be an alpha and omega is not the end. It's just a cycle. Um, right. Thank you. Thank Elder. What do you say about the fallen angels in the book of Enoch? Greetings from Zambia, Southern Africa. This is what I mean about asking a, a, a direct question. When you say, what do you say about the fallen angels in the book of Enoch? You're not asking a specific question. It's like, what do you mean to say about them? But yes, the, the fallen angels do exist. Um, they're mentioned in the Bible. They're mentioned in other scriptures as well. Um, these are the followers of Lucifer. Um, and they're, they're here causing havoc on the planet. This is why there's disagreeable and agreeable, um, bad and good for those who want to use those terms, but the fallen angels were basically cast down here with Azazel. So I'm using terms that you might not understand, like Tarnush, Azazel, Iblis, um, the devil, if you want to use these terms, because um, they were cast down here for disobeying the, the natural nature or the commandments of where they were in heaven, um, which deals with a whole different story of beings coming here from, you know, like we say before, from, from Orion, from different constellations. But yeah, um, you'll have to be more specific in terms of what you say about the fallen angels in the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is another book that most people are not familiar with because there are many books that are not included in the current version of the Bible because the Bible was put together by the Nicaea Council and they picked certain books that they put in, especially the King James Version. So there are many books that people don't know about, the Book of Enoch being one of them, that goes beyond the stories of the Bible, all right? But be more specific because the book itself has a lot of information. 
and great to hear that people are reaching us from all the way from Zambia. Okay, here's somebody. Shukran, Akhi, Akhi, been Muslim for a while, like 22 years, under the Sunni school of thought. So much of this is this I already knew, and so much I have been looking into for the past four years, and I'm in the process of realignment. I know the process of becoming one of peace through Shahada. What is the process of Wu Sabat conversion? I am not religious and never have been because I have always had, I've always, I've got to read more, I've always had nat natural way about me and always felt the authentic spiritualism was the way which led me to Al-Islam, but seeing some discrepancies in translation and in the interpretation and Yanun has struck my chord. Thanks and salam to you. Wa alaikum salam. Yeah, salam. Um, Good to hear that because, like we say, you will find your way regardless of what walk of life you're coming from. Um, Wu Sabat is not something that you, it's not a conversion per se, um, because as we say, it's like the natural and original way. It predates Islam, it predates religion. Um, but yeah, it's about a peaceful way of life. And if you want to know more and become a part of, um, you know, being a Sabian or a Nawapian of Wu Sabat, contact us, join us. You can go to the website and um, join, send an email. We'll contact you. Um, we recommend books and we give you the whole process. But the first step is to read the books, learn as much as you, you can about Wu Sabat, and that will kind of guide you to make your decision and then, you know, come and fellowship with us. All right. Um, salam, salam. Okay. Uh, someone else. Thank you for bringing to us enlightenment. Please, I'd like you to expantiate deeply on astral projection and how we can communicate with our agreeable ancestors. Again, that's in the book. It's in the book and many scrolls that we have. Um, astral projection is something that we are supposed to know how to do. But because you're not taught these things from a young age, most people stumble in, into it by accident. And normally they are afraid when it happens because when you're not used to something or you've not had the knowledge about it, it can be scary because your physical body, as we've mentioned in many videos, is composed of not just the physical, but the spiritual, the plasmatic you, the etheric you. And you can literally step outside of your physical body if you know how to do it and step back in. There's a movie called Doctor Strange. If you haven't seen it, they show you this happening where he steps out of his physical body. And um, so... Some people would do it because when you're asleep or when you go to sleep, this is when you're most calm or most peaceful. In fact, the, you know, the, the whole kind of like country sometimes is a lot quieter during those times when your being is more able to travel outside of yourself and it, it will travel to different places, different dimensions, experience different things and then come back. Sometimes you experience this as dreams. There are different types of dreams and the dreams that we're talking about here are the ones that you go somewhere or travel somewhere else and you come back. Sometimes people um, don't fuse, they, they're like about to wake up where the two union are coming back, the body, that's, the astral body has left and sometimes you wake up, your body hasn't fully returned or emerged and you're kind of stiff and you can't move and you get scared because you're, you, you can't even scream because you can't speak. And um, I've had this experience many times and many people, or in my early days anyway, many people have had it. And it can be scary because you think, what's going on? And then gradually when you re-emerge with your physical body, you can wake up and then you can start to reanimate. So astral projection is something that you can learn by way of your thoughts, by way of relaxing, by way of your diet, by way of your meditation, by way of fasting, by way of spiritual practices 
that feed your spirit and your soul as opposed to doing everything for the physical body. So you've got to learn to know your, your spiritual being, your, your real per, your real per, I was going to say person, the real you, basically. Um, what was the second part? Um, how to communicate with your agreeable ancestors. You, we've got rituals you can do. Um, how, you, you know, you basically light candles, you create the environment, you have the right intentions, and you've got to mask out or get rid of disagreeable things or beings by burning sage or palo santo. Um, the palo santo will get rid of the disagreeable and leave the agreeable entities, whereas the sage gets rid of everyone in the environment and then I say everyone, every being or entity in the environment, and then you focus and you have a communication um, through your altar, because you know, you, we, we teach you how to have an altar where it's a gateway, you're opening um, dimensions. Yeah, somebody else wanted me to clarify dimensions and density. So, um, dimensions, right? So you start off with density. Density would be like, if you're vibrating really fast, really high, um, things get thinner in terms of density. So you go density, then you come down to matter, yeah, matter. Um, and then from the matter, you get atoms. Um, then you get like cells, because atoms, cells, and then from the cells, cells form organisms. So if you look at that, like density, matter, atoms, organs and then bodies or cells organs and then bodies that gives you a density level right so th the things that are more physical more dense more harder they're slow in vibration and they're the lowest like the physical world the material world is the lowest density and then as you go up you get to the higher density so different dimensions will be like if you took water, water is a good example, right? Water can be slowed down to, or the molecules get to be more dense and they become ice. Ice is more physical, more dense, right? But you can melt the ice into liquid and then the liquid can be heated up. When you heat up the atoms, right, to, to boiling point, then the water starts to transform into steam. Yeah, and steam is lighter, more, more um, it's not as, as dense as the ice. This is a simple way of like going from solid, liquid, gas. But the gas goes into ether, and ether is even thinner to the point where, you know, obviously there's different levels like hydrogen and oxygen, and then you get to ether. So I hope that answers that question. So you've got to learn how to transform your physical into a higher state of a vibration, which is the etheric you, or we say nine ether, all right? Um, so yeah, so how you, you basically align yourself with your agreeable ancestors by doing agreeable things, because the things you do that are disagreeable are um, influenced by your disagreeable ancestors who, or other entities, not, they're not always necessarily your ancestors because you have disembodied, bodies and beings that roam the planet that can also walk into you. This is why it's important to be, you know, on a, on a spiritual higher vibration that's more positive. So when you're doing the agreeable things, you're aligning yourself with your agreeable ancestors and then you can actually communicate with them. And when you learn how to do it properly, you can personify them as well. Okay, so this is not spookism because people tell you they see ghosts um, I mentioned in a previous video that people go into the graveyard to speak to their deceased ancestors, lovers, friends, family. It's proving to you that they are still here. Um, because if they were in heaven or in hell, you wouldn't go to the graveyard to speak to them. Not everyone's here, but some haven't made the grade. Another point um, I need to make. When you deal with psychics and mediums and people that say to you that they can speak to the people on the other side on your behalf, um, a lot of times this is true in the sense that some of your ancestors who have not made the grade or have been trapped or enslaved by these disagreeable entities on the other side, they can hold them captive. So when a medium 
communicates with them, the, the, the disagreeable beings that are maybe, say, again, I don't want to scare people, but your, your ancestors that are trapped, enslaved, may be being tortured. So they can get the information from them, the medium gives it to you, and you're like, wow, not realising that, you know, these, these demons, because they want to open you up. And the way you open yourself up is through your heart. Remember, your heart, we said divine love is the seat. The minute you open yourself up and accept something, you're opening that portal between you and them. And then these disagreeable entities can then utilise you in the physical world in a disagreeable way because that's what they want. But because of these mediums, who they, they could be disagreeable as well. Not every medium is disagreeable and not everyone is trapped in a disagreeable way, but there is, a, there is a spectrum of situations and things that could be happening. But we always give you the full information or as much information as possible so you can discern what's going on in your particular situation. But yeah, do the, do the agreeable things and you will align with your agreeable ancestors. I've learned a lot from your teachings from Cameroon. Okay. What was our master teacher, Pana Bab, also a musician? Look at that. <laughs> when he was young. Yes, it's funny because we just answered that question. He was. He, was, um, he had a group called Passion and, and um, it was known as Dr. York. So Google YouTube Dr. York Passion and you will see him singing, performing his, you know, his music, even here in the UK on Top of the Pops. That's something most people probably didn't know. But yeah, so that he was a musician, singer, and uh, because he knew about tones, vibration and frequencies, his music has a particular message. Um, he did a lot of ghost writing for people, as I mentioned before. But yeah, he was definitely a musician. And one of the things he said about Dr. York, because he used to go into the clubs and people may see him in the club and they'll be like, what are you doing here? I thought you were a spiritual religious leader, because obviously at the time, he was known by many names like Imam Isa, um, Raboni Ba, Al Hadi, Al Mahdi. Um, so people that were spiritual or like conscious would be like, "Why are you in the club?" And he's like, "I'm here to get you. <laughs> Why are you in here?" So he was like, "I'm not so righteous that I don't go to the places that most religious people who just kind of like have an ego." They won't go to the streets, they won't go to the clubs, they won't go to the places where people need saving. So he took off his righteous garb and he would go into the clubs and he met most of the people, the hip hoppers that we mentioned before, and people in the music industry through being in the clubs as Dr. York, through putting out the music as Dr. York, yeah? So that's a good question. How can you find out who you really are? Just like anything else, you have to study yourself. You have to tap into the real you. There are practices, spiritual practices you can do. One of the ones you can do is look at yourself in the mirror. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, I mean really look at yourself, like spend time in the mirror, looking at your eyes, looking at your nose, studying yourself in the mirror and ask the question, who is real? Is it the one looking into the mirror or the one looking out from the mirror into you. Um, this is the way you will start to know and you will literally have a conversation with yourself. Um, and then from that, you'll obviously start to delve more into like the spiritual practices and read the scrolls, read the books. The fa fast track your spiritual and conscious journey, which leads you to like knowing what direction to go from there with the many scrolls, over a thousand scrolls um, by Dr. Yul, you know, Parnabab Yanun. He is a spiritual guide. He has a 360 degree completion of information of the physical realm as well as the spiritual realm. And he's teaching us. Um, and he has special orders for those that are really serious that want to learn more about the spiritual world. Remember, every religion has a spiritual counterpart, like the Sufi when you're dealing with um, Islam, you know, when you're dealing with Christianity, you're dealing with the, the order of the Essenes. You know, every religion, they have the dogmas and the people that just want to look good and act like they're really serious, but 
are not really serious. They're only interested in the material, the physical stuff. And then you have those that deal with the more serious studies of spirituality and learning about who you really are. And those teachings are the ones that you learn through us within the ancient Egyptian order. He had the ancient mystic order of Melchizedek. And, you know, we now have the brotherhood of the black and gold. We have um, the sisterhood. There are other parts of us which you will learn more about spirituality. So um, being a part of Wusabat is a gradual journey. And um, you, you get the 360 physical, you get the 360 of the spiritual or the unseen world as well. Okay, um, fantastic Q&A. Rahubat. Rahubat. Rahubat, that's our language. And the person, Kill Hall, 8363, um, also said, and Wadu. Wadu is bye. So it's like greetings and bye. <laughs> um, donations, donations. Yes, um, if you can help, we don't force anybody. The thing with us is, again, we don't come here and just go give you information and go, here's our cash app. Do you know what I mean? Like we produce things. We give you free information. We have free classes every week. We give you a lot of value. We put out products. Um, we've got the online academy. So if you want to support us, the OSM um, Vision Channel, they do a lot of work. How do you think you guys get these videos consistently? You know, so donations if you want to support us. Um, I already gave out acts of kindness donation at outlook.com and look in the comments to support OSM Vision, support us. We want to be doing videos. We could do like three, four videos a day if you guys were supporting us. But of course, we've got other things, responsibilities to take care of. So if you support us, the more um, we'll be able to do this. Thank you. Respect enough love, brothers. My question to you is, how many flood was there? Stefan from the Bahamas. Bahamas, we're reaching worldwide. Excellent question. Why that question is so good is because there have been many, many floods. Even the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, right? They tell you that, um, you know, the land was void and there was no land. That was a flood. That's why when you read Genesis, it's talking about the, the spirit of God was hovering or moving over the, or the, the earth on the face of the, of the waters. And that was because the planet was flooded or a part of the planet, that part was flooded at that time. Um, the flood of Utnafishtim in the Sumerian doctrine, whom people know as Noah or Seneferu in ancient Egypt, that was a flood. There have been many floods and floods happen at different times in different parts. It's just that the Noah story in the Bible, people are making out like it was a flood that completely flooded the whole planet. And, and that's where then life started from with Noah coming out of the ark with his children, etc. That story is a story that's been taken from, as I said, Utnafishtim in the Sumerian doctrine or um, the being known as Senefru in ancient Egypt. So to answer your question, there have been many, many, many floods. Um, even like the other day, for example, when there was a tsunami in um, different parts, I can't remember exactly the last one, but there were tsunamis that um, basically flood a place and people die. And if somebody was telling the story of just that part of the tsunami, you, you would think, oh, the place was flooded, people died, and then life started again not the entire earth, not the entire planet. All right, so yeah, many, many, many floods. Um, please, can you talk about spirit wives and husbands? Again, that's a very broad question, right, but it's a really good question. So we talk about the entities that are physical and there are entities that are spiritual or disembodied um, beings. People will tell you, I've had experiences where they will say, I'm lying in my bed and I've had, I, and I, I had an experience with somebody I knew who told me this, that they felt like a being came over them and was trying to have intercourse with them. Um, 
and there are, I'm, I'm trying to answer your question because it's very broad, like the way you just said, please, can you talk about spirit wives and husbands? Um, there are people who will attach themselves to a spirit being and say, okay, the, the most common one is you have women in church who say, I'm married to Jesus. But you say, but Jesus is not here physically. So is it the spiritual being that you're married to? Because they say, I've given my life to Jesus, I'm married to Jesus. And we say Jesus is a ghost. A ghost is a, a disembodied being, someone that has passed or crossed over, but you say they're still around. And so um, people would pick on spirit wives and husbands or entities that they may be able to see or know or have an interaction with and say, this is my husband or this is my wife. And you can't tell them any different because if they can see or if they know have had the experience and they're trying to tell you, you're going to say you're crazy. But like I said, a good example is women that say, I'm sure a lot of women that are Christians are going to tell you, yeah, they've said that. Jesus is my husband. How are you married to Jesus when he's not here? But um, I hope that helps. I am stuck between being a threat to the people that control the world versus them trying to really help me. How will I know the difference and what are some things they do to suppress people like this? Again, without mentioning any names or people specifically is a, a very broad question, but um, there are people who, okay, I kind of get, let me put it in context in case it will make it a bit clear for you. So for example, you might be very successful in the world and have a good job and let's say you might be working for, I don't know, the government or something and, and it's helping you progress in your career and your life. But at the end of the day, um, they take orders from other people who are higher than them. And this goes all the way to these extraterrestrials we keep mentioning. So you might say, but I work for, I don't know, um, let's say, I don't know, FBI or, do you know what I mean, NASA or whoever. And they are providing me with an experience, with a career, and I'm successful, I'm getting paid. But when you go to the top, the people that make the decisions, or even the government, um, they don't make the decisions fully because they are answering to someone else. And then you start to see what's going on in the world in terms of the wars and the different things that are going on. Like, for example, you might be a soldier and you get a good salary, you get a good you know, wage and you're successful. But then a decision comes down telling you to go and kill somebody in another country. And because you've got a uniform, you go and do it. But after doing it, you realize that, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? So now you suppress in your, do you know what I mean, your real nature. So when you're saying, um, how will I know the difference and what are some of the things they do to suppress people like us or, so, or people like this, um, a lot of soldiers come back and they realize that we've been lied to, do you know what I mean? We went out dropped bombs, killed people, did things based on a lie or someone telling us like, do you know what I mean, like um, they had weapons of mass destruction and we thought it's a threat to us. We work for our country, we want our country to succeed. So we put on a uniform and we went and killed innocent people. It's happening now with the wars in Ukraine and, you know, um, trying to get political because we're not really into the politics. But I'm just trying to answer your question in that you can do something that may be positive from, do you know what I mean, just kind of like the, the basics of it. But when you go deeper into it, there may be sinister decisions or entities that are controlling what's happening in the world. All right, I hope that answered your question. Surely heathen and heaven are linked. They are eth etymologically, um, like we've said, heaven, for example, links with, with haven, um, which is a docking station where crafts go and dock. Heathen, it relates because you learn that through religious dogma that if you don't subscribe to a particular book, then they might look at you as a Gentile or a heathen, 
because you don't follow or subscribe to what they believe or accept, um, and this is all religions in terms of the monotheistic ones, this is why they create things like hells, because they can say, I'm better than you. If you don't follow this book and do what we do, you're going to hell because you're a heathen. Um, but yet, that makes them basically look down on people. So you're be be behaving like you're better than other people. So this was separation and divisions and I'm better than you by way of religion and the wars are caused because one person believes in ideology and they think everyone should believe that and believe as they do and if you don't then we're against you. You know, so yes, the word heathen and heathen or, and heaven and heathen are related as is haven. Okay, um, great job. I wanted to ask if the elevated beings are blue in colour, appeared one big appeared one big with muscles to me in a dream, and I left a ring I left a ring in a place of the house when I woke up, the ring was there. I am passing through a lot of betrayal from my so-called family. I understand this is a protection. Yes, um, beings are all kinds of colours because remember even in ancient Egypt, right? If you look at Osiris, he's in green. You look at a lot of like the Hindu beings, they appear blue. They, and the reason is because depending on where you are in the galaxy and the universe, the environment in which you are grown in would determine your makeup. So for, for example, us Africans or you know, Negroids on the planet, people say we're black, but we're brown. We used to originally be green. The reason we're brown is because we've become, for lack of a better word, rusted. Because when you start to see that the magnesium in your body um, was replaced, like plants are green because they have chlorophyll. You see, so the oxidization is what's turned us brown. So yes, beings that are elevated can be in any colour, you know. Um, and, and this is why, you know, when you watch movies and they show aliens, so-called aliens or extraterrestrials in different colours, etc. And humans will go, oh, look at you, you look gross or whatever. They look at you, looking at you the same, you know. So yes, you can appear that way. And the ring... Um, that you've mentioned, this is again important because when you travel and you experience things in different dimensions, you're supposed to be able to remember them and you can leave um, signs and things to help you remember so that when you wake up, you know, you can be like, oh, I did actually go to that place. I did actually visit that place. So that's a good way, um, like opening doors and doing certain things that will remind you when you wake up, because most of the time people forget where they went. Um, they, even their dreams, sometimes they only remember bits and pieces of it. Um, I'm not talking about the dreams that are just like eliminating um, waste storage of, you know, things in your memory that you've kind of accumulated from the daily life, the TV, the movies and things like that, because you have those dreams as well that you have to, to purge or get rid of. And that's why you dream to do that. You know, um, but yeah, the other dreams which are more like visions or you traveling, um, if you can start practicing when you're making those travels, um, leaving signs for yourself so that if you do go back again, you know that, um, you know, you weren't, you're not crazy. All right, cool. Let's move on. I want to get through as many as possible. How can someone get to know your teachings more and be part? and also how to connect ourselves with our ancestors or how can we transcend and communicate with them. It's about knowledge, 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 knowledge. The more you know, the more you learn, then you put it into practice. How you can get in contact with us through OSM Vision, through nashat.co.uk, through dsforest.net um, and you can go on our website, there's a form, a button that says join us, um, complete that, we'll, we'll connect with you, someone will get back in touch. You can come on our classes, we have classes that are online, on Zoom, on Clubhouse and physically 
and sometimes live on YouTube at the same time. So we have many avenues. Check the comments for many, the ways you can connect with us. You can even do one-to-ones with me now. Like, go on the website and, um, you know, like, because after the classes, after the videos, people want to... The reason I started doing the one-to-ones is because I noticed that some people want to talk about such things, that their own personal experiences and certain things they've gone through that they may not be comfortable speaking about in public. And sometimes they don't, you know, they don't want to feel stupid. They don't want to think they're silly. So they want to talk to you on a one-to-one. -one. So I'm available for that. You can just go on our website, ds4s.net, DS4, and there's a one-to-one -one button. You can book an appointment. There are slots available. Um, if they're not available, you just book an available slot. We can do an hour on YouTube, uh, sorry, on Zoom or online. And um, if you're not physical, if you're physical, you can come and see us, meet us. We're real. So, yeah, that um, is available for you to learn and get the books. You can get the books. The books teach you a lot of the questions you are asking me about. I read the books. That's how I know about this. And I put the books into practice. Um, there's no point getting all the nom getting all the knowledge. Let me say that again. There's no point in getting all the knowledge and then you don't put it into practice. Like, for example, if I say to you, this book teaches you how to fast and you just read the book and you didn't actually try to fast and implement what you're being taught, you're not going to get the full benefits. Yes, you will have knowledge on what fasting is and what it's about. This is why I keep saying that these teachers that give you information, great, it's good to have information. But how do you put it into practice? How do you put it into living? How do you put it into like our language? We have our own language. We can tell you about our language, but you have to learn to speak it and use it when you speak. Then you get the full benefits of the vibrations and the tones of why you need to utilize it. You see, so that's how you get to learn more and connect with us. And we teach you about how to connect with your ancestors. I've already answered that anyway. Um, I heard you saying that you are in Ghana and Liberia and I was so curious because when you mentioned Liberia I thought you were in my country, Sierra Leone, because we share a boundary with Liberia. Yeah, we are in Ghana and we are in Liberia. Um, for those who don't know, we also do a radio show every week. So um, I'm doing a radio show tomorrow. Um, it's on galaxyafiwi.net. We'll put that in the comments as well. So you can tune in because I will be interviewing one of our family who is in Ghana. And he will give you all the information where he is and what's going on. So people know that he's calling in to the radio station tomorrow. Um, we're on the station from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. every Tuesday. Galaxyafiwi.net is the radio station. Um, so listen in tomorrow and you can ask him questions and speak to him directly. Um, we're in Liberia as well because, as you know, um, our master teacher, Dr. Malachi Z. York, is a consul general. He's a diplomat of Liberia. And this is one of the contentions in the case because as a Liberian diplomat, as a consul general, they had no jurisdiction over him because he's immune, he has immunity, but they still, you, because of racism, they still arrested him on false charges, false accusations. So the Liberian government, um, being that he's one of their citizens and one of their consul general, they are part of the legal fight, you know, to fight for him to be released because it's an injustice. It's just that another sovereign state cannot arrest a diplomat. This is, this is known, you know. So um, even Donald Trump at the moment is talking about, with his case, you know, he's supposed to have immunity as a president over certain things. So he's fighting for that now. So, yes, we are very much active in Liberia and in Ghana. Um, oh, for the rest of the world, go on our United Nuapian Nation worldwide united sabians worldwide.com website and you will see go to contact you see all the different parts of the world 
where we are at and you can contact them, send them an email, their phone numbers, emails, um, you, can, you can get to know where we are in the world. How I wish you guys were here too. <laughs> we, we can come to any country, um, you know, if we can get, get a chartered flight accommodation, I'm joking, but no, for real, we, we are all over the world and we are trying to reach as many people as we can. And if anybody wants us to come and they can set it up so that we come and teach or give classes or whatever, we'll be happy to do so. I had, I had a fun time here. I have an interest in the learning of all you will share and I can share also. Yes, each one teach one. Um, we are about sharing and you can learn everything we teach through the books, through the videos, coming to the classes, supporting us and um, yeah, we're here to share. Okay, uh, my question, hello guys, thank you for the revelations you are making. My question is about reincarnation. Is there any way of determining where and when you wish to be reincarnated and whether you will remember the knowledge you accumulated over your past lives? Excellent question. Um, yes, you determine by your actions in this life whether or not you come back or you don't come back. Um, when we say reincarnation, we're not talking about it in the way that some religious organisations teach it, where they say you come back in the same body, because that's where the word carnation, cardinal, means coming back in the same body. We don't teach that you're coming back in the exact same body, because scientifically your body decomposes and goes back to the ground and to the elements, so you can't come back in the same body. Um, you know, like the, the story of Lazarus and Jesus in the Bible calling him out in the same body after he was dead, after a period of time when, you know, you, you would have started to decompose. Um, but we do teach it in the sense of the, the recycling of life, yeah, coming back, and you come back through your bloodline. So you have to, the makeup of your DNA and your genetics is what will allow you to come back if you do come back and you come back because you may not have elevated to the stages or, for lack of a better word, passed all the, the examinations that you need to, to go to the next level of existence or to um, another life or realm, okay? Um, and the, the knowledge, your memory can get wiped. So when you come back, you won't remember certain things, but some memories are retained because each cell actually stores your memories as well. So um, it depends on the situation. We do have um, books that go into more detail about this. Um, I think one of them is the spiritual you after the physical you dies. Um, we've got others that um, you can look into for more information about the knowledge. Remember I explained in a previous video that you have a disc um, called, you know, like a me disc, and this stores all the information that you accumulate, and it's actually recorded and written, um, and some people know the records as the Akasha records, which are light, light records in terms of information stored in crystals, all right? So yes, you can um, remember some information when you come back, and others can be wiped, okay? Um, heaven means a docking site. Yes, um, that's what I said before, but it's haven, where they get the word heaven from. So yeah, it does mean a docking site. What is the time frame from the breaking up of this solar system into the Milky Way and so forth to where beings evolve away, aware of it, or did the beings exist prior to it? What is it? Okay, um, again, that's in the book. Um, there's, a, there's a section in the book called the big picture and the origin of everything. Um, the origin of everything actually tells you and gives you all the timeline from 76 trillion years ago. That's how far back we go. So um, it's all in here. So it's, it's not point of me kind of like repeating it, but if you kind of just give you a few bits, the, the, the sun in our solar system that keeps us alive, that was created 93 billion years ago. 
that gives you a frame, right? The crash of Nibiru that people talk about with the Anunnaki, that's like 24 billion years ago. Um, the different evolutions or the different experiments with what people call Adam or the Adamites or the, um, the different Adam and Eves, you can go to 49,000 49, years ago and then the Adamites of the, the, the last hybrids is 6,000 years ago. So to answer your question, you're talking about trillions and trillions of years ago and it's all in our book. You can actually get that information. Um, and I explained before that the Milky Way came from another sun called Sal. Okay, you can find this in the holy tablets that Dr. Malachi Z put out many years ago that explains the creation of the universe. We've also got a book called um, Science of Creation, the Science of Creation that goes into that. We have that here available in the store for those who want to get that. Um, we have Extraterrestrial and Creation, which is another one that deals with how extraterrestrials were terraforming and creating, you know, this planet and so forth. All right. Um, it says, uh, Queen Elizabeth, this is Lily Clement, um, D-I-3-L-J. Queen Elizabeth and those in control was not the true bloodline. Is this correct? Then my previous question is already answered. Thanks again. Yes, um, they're not the true bloodline because they go back to these reptilian beings that we speak about from the draconians and the uh, reptilians. Um, that go back to the Anunnaki and so on. So yes, they're not the true bloodline. The original bloodline is the Natharu or the ancient Africans that were here first, known as the Natharu. Every person and seed um, comes from them on the planet and extraterrestrials that link to them come from Osiris, come from Orion and um, Sirius. Sorry, um, my mistake. Um, so yes, that's true, that Queen Elizabeth and those in control were not the true bloodline. Uh, appreciate all you guys do. Is there a difference between incarnate and reincarnate? Is it like one is a new soul and the other is not? Um, yeah, partly because you could be coming here for the first time um, and that means that you're incarnating. Re, or to do again, to reincarnate means you've been here before and you're coming back again. So that's kind of like the simple answer. Um, I explained that there are certain people that only came here for the first time, people that are born from, um, or new souls. There were new souls that had not been here before from 1970 to the year 2000. And then you also had golden children that were born between 1973 and the year 2003. And all of you, those types of beings, need to be taught about who and what you are. Because um, some of you don't know. You have all kinds of experiences and you don't really know about who you are. And Dr. York being the spiritual guide with 360 degrees of physical information and 360 degrees of spiritual information adding to 720 can help you by way of the books because he's written books like The Golden Children. And um, you can learn more about that. Okay, last couple. Um, thank you for share. Where can we find you in South Africa to get the books and meet the community? I already explained that. Go on the website. Um, we are worldwide. So when you say where can you find you and how to get the books, the books can be ordered online. Um, but yeah, you can see all the locations on the website. Go to unitedsabeansworldwide.com, go to the contact us and you can get that information. Or contact us here at nashat.co.uk. Um, love. Okay, this is the last question. I've heard you say in our language many times and I wonder what language is it? It is exactly. Is it the language of a country, city, village. Thanks for considering my question. Right. I keep saying our language because our language is the original and first language on the planet. It's been known by many names. 
um, some being Sabaic, um, Noapic, but we call it Misbatia, and it has scripts such as the hieroglyphics, which became the Metuneta to some people, and the cuneiform in ancient Shuma or Shina. Um, so because it was the original language, most languages come out of it, but that's what we're saying when we say our language. So you hear us say Rahubat, that means greetings. Um, you know, we, we speak it, um, some very fluently, some still learning, some just starting to learn, and we teach it as well. All right, so that's the language. Oh, uh, that's a repeat of the question. Okay, I think call it a wrap for today. Remember, get your questions in the comments. Um, those that get the most likes, we will answer first. So when you see a question that you like or you think that should be answered, give it a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe to OSM Vision. And most of all, please help us to get the master teacher out of incarceration. All right. So to do that, you can help by getting in touch with us. Um, it doesn't always have to be financial, but if you do want to contribute financially, acts of kindness donate at outlook.com. That's a PayPal address. You can just donate whatever your heart tells you to. Um, you should find that information in the comments. Until next week, peace.